In this video, we're going to do a hands-on to create some really nice looking spark lines in Tableau. So what do spark lines do? They present the general shape of variation over time. Now, we have to resist the temptation with, with spark lines to put too much information into the spark line. They're not supposed to have axes or grid lines. That's because what they help us to do is not understand the particular values, but they help us to understand really dense amounts of information by looking at a whole bunch of different trend shapes simultaneously. Now, the nice thing about spark lines is they were designed by Edward Tufte to replace large graphical components on dashboards like gauges and stoplights, etc. And they, and they give so much more insight than those um, large graphical components did in the past. So Sparkline's classic application is being added to it. Sparkline's classic application is being added to a table, which is point in time data to add in some context as to whether or not these numbers are quote unquote good or bad, right? So in this, in this, in if we were simply given this table of information, we would understand that the absolute performance of these numbers is X, of these, of these categories is X. Women's apparel is 32.6 million, bed and bath is 11.1. .1. But we have no idea what the relative performance is against each department's performance history, and also what the relative performance growth or shape is compared to the other departments. When we add in spark lines, we see that, wow, women's apparel is doing great. Not only are they the highest performing uh, group, they've also gr pretty steadily grown in the past 12 months. Um, toys looks really good too. However, electronics, although they're at 14.9 and show that they are performing you know, absolutely higher than baby apparel shows a marked reduction. And although baby apparel hasn't really done super well this year, you can see that their shape shows that they've been pretty much level. So electronics is something that we probably should be looking at as far as something that management needs to address. Something we would never understand if we were simply looking at this table. So we're going to go into Tableau now and make this spark line. It's pretty straightforward, but it takes a whole lot of steps to get to this point. Uh, normally in Tableau, spark lines by default are pretty, pretty kind of gross. And so we're going to have to do a whole lot of steps to make a spark line that looks this good. All right. So I'm going to switch over to Tableau now. Okay, so I've opened up the Sparkline Start workbook. I'd like you to do a couple things. Here's the instructions. Open the file and create a chart that has continuous month, that's the green one, of order date in the columns, and category and sum of sales in the rows. All right, and when you're done, your graph should look like this. I'll go ahead and do it right now. And so your graph should look like this, or if it's more full screen, it looks like this. All right. So the next thing we want to do is to add the high and the low points to each of the rows in the graph. But this isn't really an out of the box option. You could add labels to the min, uh, labels to the min and the max point using the marks card, which ends up looking like this. But that's not what we want, all right? Let me demonstrate what I'm saying. We could just we could just go over here to the marks card and for the label, just choose to only label the min and the max points, right? And do that for each pane and show the mark labels. And we get the maximum and the minimum for each pane. But that's not what we want. 
So I'm just going to undo that. Now, I've actually helped you out in this one as far as um, adding a calculation that can help us to make that uh, cool looking spark line. And you have a field in the workbook that's called high low. Go ahead and right click it and open it for editing to look at this formula. And I'll show the formula here. This is what the formula should look like when you open up the high low field, when you right click and choose edit. It says if window max sum of sales, that means for the current window, if the sum of sales, for, if the maximum sum of sales point equals the sum of sales for the current point, or the maximum, the minimum sum of sales, the window min, so window max sum of sales, it says for all of the sum of sales points in this window, if the maximum equals this sum of sales, or for all the sum of sales points in this window, if the minimum equals the sum of sales, then put sum of sales into this high low field. And so what's going to happen is for every row in the database, um, for every row in the visualization, there's going to be a new field added that's called high low. And if the row equals the minimum or the maximum in its own window, there's going to be a new field that says the same value as the sales as the sum of sales. Okay, so and the other ones will all say null. All right. So what that's going to let us do is plot just for the max and the minimum points, the sum of sales. All right. So this is what I want you to do. I want you to add high low to the row shelf, which is going to add a dual. Uh, we're going to add an extra row here and then we're going to actually uh, dual access this thing. All right, so add high low to the row shelf and then your graph will look like this and Then we're going to right click high low and choose dual axis. All right, I'll do this right now So I'm going to add high low to my rows, which is going to give me two rows for each category and Then I'm going to click on the drop down or right click on high low and choose dual axis and now you see that I've got these points that are here and the colors are kind of messed up. We're going to we're going to fix these colors in a few minutes. All right. But we've got the points and we've got the lines. All right. So we're well on our way to making the grid lines. Sorry, the spark lines. Now, the next thing that we have to do is synchronize the axes on the two sides so that we, we make sure that they plot at the same level. And we're going to have to make another change after we make our, after we synchronize our axes, we're going to have to do one more thing and let's take a look at what that is. All right. So synchronizing the axes is important. Now in this case, it's not going to really make that big of a deal because we're plotting values that are at the same range, but we want to always make sure, we're being careful uh, to, to synchronize these um, these axes. Now, the other thing that we want to make sure that we do is now notice that these axes are all pretty much in the same scale, but they're they're from zero to fifty thousand. But if you'll notice, office supplies never gives above forty thousand. Technology gets to fifty thousand, but furniture never gets above forty thousand. So we actually, in spark lines, don't want the scale of the spark lines to be, to be determined by the biggest spark line. We want all of these scales to be independent. So I'm going to right click here and choose edit the axis. And then you see here where it says independent axis ranges for each row. That's what we want to do. So I'm going to hit that. And now I'm going to click this X and get rid of it. And you'll see now that this axis only goes up to about 40,000. This one goes to 50,000. And you'll see that they are independent of each other. Every axis is a different scale. All right. So those are the two steps that we really want to make sure we do. We want to, we want to make sure that we synchronize the axis and we want to make those axes independent. Now there's one other field that I've added to the, um, to the workbook. 
and it's called color. So right click that field and open it up and you'll see this formula. And so it's really quite straightforward. It's an if then else if uh, formula. It says if the sum of sales of this point equals the sum of the ma the minimum sum of sales then low. So basically put in the color field the word low. Else if the sum of sales equals the maximum sum of sales, which is the same basic calculation we did before, then put in the color field high. Now every that's only going to happen for two points and everything else is going to be a null. All right? And then what we're going to do is we're going to assign a different color for low and high, right? So we're going to add the color field to the color mark on the high low marks card. So and what that means, and, and when we finish, it'll look like this. You see how we'll have a, a green and a red. Now, you have to do it on only one of the marks cards. I'll switch over to Tableau now. So here's our color field. And again, if I click the drop down, I choose edit. Here's that formula we were talking about. Now, remember on the marks card, when you have more than one row, you end up with more than one marks card. And we want, we have the all, and then we have the one for sum of sales and the one for high low. And the one we're interested in dropping this color onto is the color for the high low marks card. All right, and you'll see here that, now you'll see here that my colors are a little bit different than what were in the slides. And that's because I've got to go in now and kind of modify them, all right? And your colors may not be the same as mine. Tableau is not always uniform about the default colors that it picks. So let's fix these colors right now. So the first thing I want to do is go, go to my sum of sales. And I want to change that color to being more of a, of a gray. So let's grab this gray and click on sales and hit apply. So I clicked on sales, click this gray, hit apply. All right. And that's... It's a, still a pretty bold line, so let's go into the size of that line and make it maybe about half as big as it was. Ah, oh, that's starting to look much more like a spark line line now. Now let's go to high and low and go to color. We'll choose to edit the colors, and for high, we'll put in green. For low, we'll just choose the red, which was already chosen here. And for null, it doesn't really matter, but I'm just going to give it this gray for now. And those dots are, are there, but they're a little small. So let's make them a little bit bigger. Maybe even that big. There we go. And now we're starting to look like spark lines. Now you see down here how, how this uh, indicator shows us that we have 138 null values. That's a good thing to know. But we don't necessarily need that in our chart because we've intentionally created this field with 138 nulls. And I'm going to right click and choose hide the indicator. And then I'm going to edit my um, legend here to just hide it. Because we know that's high and that's low. It makes it totally makes sense. All right. And we don't really need this card either. All right. So now we've got our, our, our spark lines pretty well done. But there's a few more steps. And we're going to quickly look at what those steps are, and then we're going to go and do them all together, all right? Now, we've already done the first three of these. We've changed the color of the sales line to light gray. We changed the color of the high, low to red and green. We've hidden the measure names and color cards. And now we're going to do a few things. We're going to get rid of some headers. We're going to resize the graphs, and then we're going to remove all the grid lines. And in the end, we're going to end up looking like this, all right? So let's do that now. So I'm back in Tableau. And the first thing I'm going to do is hide this header. Hide this header. Wow, and now it's really starting to look kind of cool. Now instead of standard, let's just, well, we could do it this way. We can go ahead over here and we can, if we mouse over here to the right of the graph, we can drag it over, right? We can make it like that. We can move this up a little bit. And that's OK, because we're going to hide the month of order date header. And now we're really starting to cook with gas here. I'm going to make it look like this. Now, later on, we're going to need to do this. I'm just going to hide the title. 
We don't need that. I'm going to hide this category um, field label. Now we're getting really close. Now the last thing we have to do is get rid of all of these grid lines. And this is one of the more frustrating things in Tableau. So we're going to have to do some formatting. So we're going to right click on some of sales and choose format. And we get the format pane. All right. Now there's a lot of different things that we have we can do deal with in here. But we're going to be mainly focusing on these um, borders and lines. OK, so the first thing we want to do is look at this row divider. We don't want that. We don't want these column dividers. So let's get rid of that. And now it's kind of confusing because um, it, which lines are these middle ones? Well, we have to go into the actual lines here. And now we see that we have some zero lines we want to get rid of. We have reference lines we want to get rid of. We have drop lines we want to get rid of. Uh, what else am I missing here? Oh, on the rows. Oh, there we go. Axis ticks. None. Oh, there it is. Grid lines. None. Now, now we're really looking good here. We could do some changes a little bit. We could change some font things here if we wanted to, or we could even like spread this up a little bit. But right there, we've got some pretty nice looking grid lines. All right. And that's way better than what you get out of the box in Tableau. Now we're going to do another video where we add this to the table in that classic way that grid lines are used.